Hey guys, before I start the video, I just want to make a quick announcement, and that is that I'm at 1,000 subscribers now. I'm super excited about this and I'm really grateful, so thank you all for following along. If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll have seen that I'm actually quite busy. I've been working on my 3D printer almost non-stop. I also managed to release the tool turret CAD for my lathe. I'm still planning on releasing the drawings soon, and the coding is coming along well, which I'll also put up on my Patreon. I've also been helping get this truck ready to drive 100 miles into the Canadian wilderness for a bachelor party this weekend, so hopefully I'll come back from that. But now on to some business. I made these motor mounts last week for my 3D printer. You can see I have some screw clearance issues, but I'm ultimately pretty happy with how they turned out. The main reason this is so bulky is because I needed a kind of weird standoff distance for it to work with the pillow blocks that I have. I've also soldered most of the motor connectors on. A definite positive for making a motor connector like this is that it's mostly vice work. It's a fairly simple part to make, I just contoured it from one side and then I drilled all the important mounting holes. When I was done with that I flipped it over and faced it. So this seems like a lot of unnecessary work, especially for just like a motor bracket. But if you think about it, my other options would have been to have standoffs and a plate, which would have been extra parts. Or I could have tried to do something out of sheet metal, which I don't like my odds of doing successfully. The motor bracket attaches to the 30mm extrusion using M6 fasteners with T-slot nuts. This also allows me a little bit of adjustment, which is always good. The whole thing was designed in such a way that I can basically just put the coupler spider on the motor side and then push the motor into position. Then I can screw the motor in from the back and everything is connected. One fairly common mistake using other kinds of couplings is basically forgetting set screw access. So when you put your coupling in place, you have to be able to actually access it while it's in position to tighten up the set screws. One of the cooler looking parts is what I'm just calling the end effector. It's basically going to hold on to the hot ends that extrude plastic. So you can see I actually have space for four hot ends, but I only think I'm going to use two. I think that four color 3D printing looks pretty horrible, and I can't see myself needing more than two different materials. So I think I'll put some other kind of accessory, like maybe a drilling head or a milling head in the other positions. So I got the material for this particular part rating the scrap bin when I was back in school. I used to frequent the scrap bin quite a bit because I had my tag milling machine in my dorm and I needed something to feed it. So this looks like it's just 6061 but I'm not totally sure. I'd been holding onto this piece for a while because it was so big but I've been trying to work on not holding onto stuff like that for so long so I cut it up on the bandsaw, cleaned it up on the manual mill and then I started working on it on the tarmac. First thing I did was contour the outside then I used the outside surfaces as references so I could do the sides. The only really important dimensions on here are keeping opposite sides parallel and adjacent sides perpendicular, and that's because the bearings are going to be located against the flange, so they need to be at right angles. One thing I really should have done is made sure that I oversized the bores a little better. That way the bearings would have been located by their flanges and so I wouldn't have had to worry about lining up the bores quite so precisely. As it turns out, they were beautiful slip fits and everything aligned perfectly, so dodge a bullet on that one. The next thing I did was a slider for the z-axis. I decided to make this part out of half inch plate because everyone's got half inch plate and when I do put the plans out I want to have materials that lots of people can actually access rather than random big blocks of material that I happen to have. That's actually always been something that's bothered me on YouTube. People saying, oh, make a particle collider for five dollars. I happen to have this particle collider lying around so I just had to put a front door on it, which I got for about five dollars. There, five dollars. So the reason I'm putting these T-nuts on first is actually because of a, an order of assembly issue. I used a simplified CAD model of the bearing housing that was basically just the housing and didn't take into account the fact that the bearing stuck out. So you couldn't actually put a socket head cap screw to screw into the T-nut uh, from the other side because there's no space for it. I fixed it in my CAD and any CAD that I release is going to have that fix but it's just a stupid little mistake that I managed to work my way around by doing things in a funny order. So the next thing is just attaching a little piece of 30mm by 60mm extrusion. And you can see there that I have some access issues with the screw, so like I said, that'll be fixed in any CAD I release. Finally, I put a plate on the back, and that plate is going to support the ball nut bracket. And you can see I put a pocket there, and that pocket is just for the sake of being a pocket. So as usual, I got my ball screw from Fidgets, and it comes with uh, a bracket for the ball nut, which you can see there. and. Uh, that bracket is, I think, $8 or something like that, uh, which is probably cheaper than I could get the material to make that bracket for. 
So it's usually worth designing around standard parts like that, and that's exactly what I did here. I'm only supporting this 12mm ball screw from one side. It's moving very slowly and it doesn't have very much load applied to it, so there's almost no chance of it whipping and there's almost no chance of it buckling. Uh, a second support would be a waste of money and would probably require more custom parts to make it fit. The exposed extrusion on this shuttle is basically going to get an angle bracket and another piece of extrusion, which is going to support some kind of kinematic mount for the table. The next part I made was kind of a chassis for the electronics. I just laser cut this out of acrylic. I gotta say again that laser cutting is probably the most economical way of prototyping fairly serious parts. Um, we just have a little 60 watt laser at work and it does up to half inch acrylic pretty well. This is actually the second one of these parts I've made because the first part was just just a hair tight on the gecko driver I'm putting in now. And uh, I tried to go for a little bit of a press fit and acrylic doesn't like that so much so it split. So the board I'm using to control this is actually called a Roomba board. I had this on my last 3D printer and it worked quite well. It was quite easy to set up and it was it was very forgiving to me wiring things incorrectly. So I have to say I quite like it. I seem to recall that this board is quite similar to the Arduino Mega. Uh, I know it's got some 3D printer specific functionality to it. It's got voltage regulators, it's got relays. Uh, it can take 24 volt power, which is great. And Ultimately, it's quite simple to use and the tech support's fairly good, so if it's still out there, I'd highly recommend it. The electronics chassis is going to sit kind of in the bottom corner of the printer. I need two different power supplies, which is kind of a pain in the butt. I'm going to use a 12 volt to run the Roomba and I need a, a 48 volt to run the stepper motors with the Gecko Drive, so... I'm just going to put those on the bottom in sort of an L configuration and I'll have them go to a common AC plug. So the last parts I made are just idler brackets. You can see the idler there is from Fidgets and I'm just attaching it with a shoulder screw. Uh, I love shoulder screws, I use them for a lot of stuff, but you gotta be careful because the standard size ones have actually pretty bad tolerances on them. So if I'm on McMaster I usually go for like the precision ones because they're usually plus zero minus a thou. Um, you can see there that I've got a little counter bore on the top of the bracket and that is just for the shoulder screw to sit in. So it applies the load to the bracket directly as opposed to just bending the threads, which might cause a failure. Well, that's pretty much it for updates. I got those parts done, so I guess all I have left to do really is plugging it into the computer and making it work, and also doing uh, a heated bed, which I don't think is going to be that hard. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Uh, I have an Instagram account if you want to follow along day to day, and I also have a Patreon account if you want to contribute to this project or others. And, um... Hopefully I come back from this bachelor party intact. Cheers, guys.